Matt Lauer made a name for himself as a beloved host of NBC's Today alongside the groundbreaking likes of Katie Couric and Savannah Guthrie. So how did he go from beloved TV news host to disgraced former star? This is the transformation of Matt Lauer. Picture this scenario. You go back to your mom's house for a long weekend, and you're in the living room when she flips on the television. There, sitting perfectly center screen, is the then-beloved Matt Lauer, recounting the headlines of the day all while adoring fans hold signs and wave to the cameras at 30 Rock. For an extensive period of time, it seemed that Lauer, NBC, and 30 Rock were synonymous beings, and we can imagine that symbiotic relationship brought Lauer a lot of joy and pride. After all, he is a true New Yorker. Lauer was born to Maryland, and Jay Lauer on December 30, 1957, in the great city of New York. As noted by Celebrity Net Worth, his mom owned a boutique and his dad worked as an executive for a bicycle company. While Lauer eventually ventured out of the Big Apple for college at Ohio University, it's safe to say that the city held a very special place in his life, given that his early life and the bulk of his career blossomed in the streets of New York. The sentiment that you need a college education to be successful is rampant, but that wasn't the case for Matt Lauer. Lauer dropped out of Ohio University in 1979, just four credits shy of graduating, in order to work at WOWK-TV in Huntington, West Virginia. He became the producer for the station's noon broadcast, and later became a reporter for their 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. broadcasts. After earning his chops at the station, Lauer moved on to co-hosting PM Magazine and its local productions in Richmond, Providence, and New York City city between 1980 until 1986, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Of his time in Rhode Island, Lauer told the Providence Journal that he hated leaving his gig with Channel 10, calling his time there, quote, a couple of real good years, Lauer told the publication. People in Providence treated us like royalty. I was loving it. I hated leaving there. While with Channel 10, Lauer worked with the likes of Doug White and Sheila Martinez, the latter of which kept in touch after Lauer moved to NBC's Today. Following his time with Channel 10, Lauer moved back to New York to pursue the next leg of his career. After leaving Channel 10, Matt Lauer came back to New York, but his hosting gigs didn't stick. As noted by Journal News, Lauer's string of short-lived gigs started in 1986 with the WNYW show Made in New York, which only lasted for 15 weeks. The year 1988 brought Lauer the hosting gig of Talk of the Town for WNEW-TV in Boston, followed by a two-year stint as host of the three-hour live interview show Nine Broadcast Plaza for WWOR-TV. In 1990, Lauer was the host of a pilot show called Day in Court, before he went to work for the Travel Channel as the co-host of Etc. Etc., but the show didn't last for long. By 1992, Lauer was starting to make some moves that would stick. He became the co-anchor of Today in New York for WNBC-TV alongside Jane Hansen, and worked as a newsreader on NBC's Today when needed. Between 1992 and 1997, Lauer co-hosted both Weekend Today and NBC News at Sunrise, but really took significant career steps when he subbed in for Bryant Gumbel, who was the host of Today at the time. After a number of short-lived co-hosting gigs, Matt Lauer finally got his big break. Lauer replaced Bryant Gumbel as host of NBC's Today in 1997 after serving as the show's newsreader. While the move certainly made sense given Lauer's existing presence on the show, the newly minted host was reportedly very nervous to undertake the role. According to the New York Times, Lauer's first week on the job was, quote, full of jitters and awkwardness, but his nerves certainly didn't seem to turn away viewers. Lauer's first week as host was the show's second highest viewed week in history at the time. The production team behind the storied news network was obviously very happy with the decision to bump Lauer up to the leading role as host. Matt Lauer had a lot of career momentum in 1997, but his personal life was also gaining some ground. As noted by Yahoo Life, 1997 was also the year that he met Annette Roque, a Dutch-born model who made a name for herself in cosmetic advertisements. When she moved to New York City, she was modeling for brands such as J. Crew and Victoria's Secret, and based on reports about their blind date, Lauer and Roque hit it off right away. The pair were engaged just five months after they met, and they got married in Watermill, New York in October 1998. The couple ultimately had three children together. If you're over the age of 25, chances are you can recall exactly where you were on September 11, 2001. For those born after that fateful event, the date still stands in remembrance. As for Matt Lauer, the world-shattering event marked one of his most prominent performances as a news anchor, as he was on the air when the attack commenced. Lauer was interviewing writer Richard Hack about a new book when he was stopped mid-interview. We want to go live right now and show you a picture of the World Trade Center, where I understand do we have it? 
No, we do not. He was informed that there was a photo to be shown on live television, and after a technical mishap, the camera cut to Lauer and co-host Katie Couric. The footage of Lauer covering one of the world's most devastating stories can still be seen on YouTube, and his remarks when the plane crashed into the second tower are harrowing. What we've just seen is, is about the most shocking videotape I've ever seen. The footage of Lauer and Couric reporting on the attacks can also be seen in the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York City. Breaking through the glass ceiling in business and politics has been the goal of countless women who have all strived to take a seat in traditionally male-occupied roles. When it was Hillary Clinton's turn to represent the Democratic Party in the 2016 presidential election, she wasn't just at the mercy of voters' opinions and political pundits. She also had to contend with the ways in which hosts and debate moderators treated her, which were clearly rooted in sexism. Q. Matt Lauer, who came under intense fire for his treatment of Clinton after a live, primetime forum that featured both her and then-competitor Donald Trump. Right, but you so said wait, now, wait, you think you're going to cheat. Look, this is an important issue. I know we're in, on TV, we don't have a lot of time. I want to get to a lot of questions. Talk. As noted by the New York Times, Lauer was accused of, quote, unfairness, sloppiness, and even sexism in his handling of the event, as he consistently interrupted Clinton and refused to fact-check Trump after he made wildly inaccurate claims about Iraq. It was totally against the war in Iraq. Lauer's handling of the forum was so bad that political advisors and members of the journalism community took to social media to express their outrage. Former Barack Obama aide Tommy Vidor posted, How in the hell does Lauer not fact-check Trump lying about Iraq? This is embarrassingly bad. For almost 20 years, Matt Lauer served as a fixture of morning television, and while his on-screen persona was that of a trusted, reliable anchor, Lauer's reported behavior behind closed doors was disturbing, and ultimately led to his departure from NBC. As noted by the New York Times, a former employee came forward with harrowing accusations against Lauer, telling the Times that Lauer had called her to his office back in 2001, locked the door behind her, and proceeded to assault her. She recalled passing out and having to seek medical attention after the attack, but she did not come forward with her story for fear of being shamed or reprimanded. Over 15 years later, she made her experience known, and NBC fired Lauer as a result. Andrew Lack, the NBC News chairman, wrote in a staff memo at the time, "...while it is the first complaint about his behavior in the over 20 years he's been at NBC News, we were also presented with reason to believe this may not have been an isolated incident." Lauer said in a statement that he had, quote, "...sorrow and regret for the pain he had caused." Matt Lauer's fall from grace was certainly shocking to some, and more than two years later, additional information about his alleged behavior during his time as a Today co-host came to light. As noted by Us Weekly, journalist Ronan Farrow released a book entitled Catch and Kill in 2019, in which former NBC employee and assistant to NBC star Meredith Vieira, Brooke Nevels, claimed that Lauer sexually assaulted her at the Sochi Winter Olympics in 2014. Nevels recounted to Farrow, "...it was non-consensual in the sense that I was too drunk to consent." In response to the troubling allegations, Lauer released a lengthy statement refuting all notions that the encounter was not consensual. Lauer's statement read, the story Brooke tells is filled with false details intended only to create the impression this was an abusive encounter. Nothing could be further from the truth. I have never assaulted anyone or forced anyone to have sex, period. As noted by the Daily Mail, it was reportedly Vieira who encouraged Nevels to come forward with her story. While Matt Lauer's professional life went up in flames, so did his personal life. Details about his marriage to Annette Roque came to light in the wake of his dismissal from NBC, and an inside source shared with Us Weekly that Roque had wanted to end her marriage to Lauer for some time. The insider told the outlet, "...Annette wanted out of the marriage for a long time. She stayed for Matt's career, and more important, for their kids. She's been through hell." The inside source divulged that there had been, quote, "...cracks in the union between Lauer and Roque for some time," and that Lauer's behavior as a, quote, ladies' man had taken its toll on their marriage. The insider went on to tell Us Weekly, "...there were affairs in the beginning, but Annette chose to believe Matt's denials during their marriage." In September 2019, Lauer and Roque's divorce was finalized, as noted by People, and the exes stated that their primary focus was the well-being of their three children. As noted by Page Six, Lauer was, quote, "...bending over backwards to give Roque what she wanted during their divorce proceedings, and it was reported that she walked away with a figure as high as $20 million." Since leaving NBC, Matt Lauer has kept a low profile, and he doesn't have a ton of friends in his corner. As noted by People, Lauer has been living in the Hamptons and has been spending time with his children. 
He is also romantically involved with Shaman Abbas, a Welsh businesswoman. Despite getting his personal life slightly back on track, Lauer reportedly misses the rush of work and wants to get back in the game. A friend of Lauer's shared with People that the disgruntled anchor, quote, wants to work again and has spent time trying to disavow Ronan Farrow's aforementioned reports that he sexually assaulted Brooke Nevels. A close friend of Lauer's told People, Matt Lauer believes strongly that Ronan did not verify the information pertaining to him. Lauer's close friend also told people that heading back to work and, quote, doing the journalistic work he loves is in Lauer's future. Another source told People, Matt cares so much about what people think about him, even though he might not want to admit that. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.